you cannot undermine the role state bank of india has played in every indian's life it has kept our money safe it has given us capital to grow it has ensured that a financial future irrespective of what has happened in the world is secure and it gives me an honor and great pleasure to come to state bank of india's headquarters and interact with the chairman of state bank of india now he is not happy but he is super happy why because all of us are happy that we are celebrating 75 years of independence but he is super happy because state bank of india stock is also at an all time high so sir welcome to the show thank you thank very you much thank you very much dikun ji thank you. thank you thank you it's pleasure to host you over here thank you exciting times oh yes no doubt about it uh, of course for any banker one has to uh, they have got an eye on the risk always but the skill lies in how to navigate the risk and navigate the risk in a manner which is in the interest of the people whom they serve and which is in the interest of the stakeholders whom they serve so that is something which is something which keeps us uh, always active and always engaged with the, you know our thoughts to serve the customers best state bank of india has managed to keep its relevance the most important thing is that in the history of indian financial markets banks have come and gone but it is state bank of india which is india's oldest bank has managed to remain relevant in today's world which is disrupt where disruption has taken over i do agree and i in fact i'm i'm very i'm i'm very proud to share that you know our history goes back to 1806 1806 1806 when, when bank of bengal came into existence later on bank of madras and bank of bombay came into existence all three banks were merged into presidency bank and then came imperial bank of india incidentally imperial bank of india also performed the role of the central bank of the country before reserve bank of india came into existence so at that point of time we were the central bank of the country we were also managing the the government finances and we were also the commercial bank it's a very unique combination which probably will not be seen at many places across the globe so we have got that kind of proud history but the most important point is that all this while we have remained relevant for our customers and for which we are actually grateful to our customers for having reposed their confidence and trust in us uh, also the fact remain that over the period of time the customer expectations have grown and we are proud to live up to their expectation how do you retain talent and i'm asking this very frankly because retaining talent is core to any financial institution state bank of india is a bank but it is a bank which is housing some of the biggest subsidiaries uh, we all know that the psu salary levels and compensations are not the best in the industry esops are not there yet are you able to retain talent see we have got a blend of the the corporate governance of a public sector and also the professionalism of the private sector that is what we practice when it comes to our, all our companies because in all our companies the mds and ceo goes from the bank okay. and also at the board level we have got some of the representation some of the boards i am chairing and when it comes to the board representation in terms of independent directors there is adequate representation from the people from the industry and when it comes to hiring talent from the market even in the main bank also we have started hiring people from the market wherever we feel that we have got a gap and we don't have the requisite skill we are hiring people from the market at market related compensation also but within the bank we are hiring them on a, on a contract but when it comes to subsidiary subsidiary is the cadre has got created over the years incidentally we have our subsidiary started way back in the year 1986 we had the first sbi capital market which yes. is which is the investment bank which i would say you were heading is, it at some point in time no i headed the mutual, mutual fund mutual fund business so in fact sbi capital market is the first investment bank and today when it comes to many of the investment bankers who are there in the country they owe their origin to sbi capital market incidentally there is alma mater also which we, in fact <laughs> there is alumni for sbi capital market so which very clearly means that it has it, it has been given the status of alma mater by many so that is that actually is a very proud history then it was in the year 86 87 we came with the mutual fund in 88 when for, when for the first time in government of india they had said that there will be mutual fund to be set up in the private sector after uti we were the first one so that is something with, that's the history which we have we we came out with our life insurance company in 2000 thereafter we came with the general insurance company in 2010 in between we had uh, 
DFHI, which used to be the earlier discount and finance house of India, even that was taken over by State Bank of India. So we are there in the primary dealership also. We had set up the card company yes. way back in the year 1998-99, uh, which was a joint venture with GE. Incidentally, some of these companies were the joint ventures. Mm -hmm. When we set up our life insurance company, it was a joint venture with Cardiff of BNP Paribas. And similarly, in case of mutual fund also, Amundi is our current joint venture partner. Mm -hmm. Though Society General came in at one stage, but Society General got merged globally, so it became Amundi. So that way, what we have done is that skill which we don't have, we don't mind looking out and getting it and ensuring that we should blend best of the governance practices, best of the value system and offer the customer the very best because State Bank of India is synonymous to trust in this country. And all our product, when they are being rolled out in the market, all the product managers are mindful that there is a State Bank name attached to it and they cannot betray the trust of the customer. No, it's, it's, it's absolutely incredible because when you have to be number one in financial products, it is purely based on performance. And the fact that your mutual funds are performing, you're getting inflows. The fact that you are able to give a good premium rate, you're getting in, you know, insurance uh, premium. So it's absolutely incredible to see that everything is coming under the one umbrella. My next question is, let's talk about the credit cycle and your understanding of the economy. There seems to be a magical turnaround in your NPAs in last three, four years. Uh, there was a time when SBI and PSU banks were almost written off because of their asset management. Why is there a magical turnaround? The good work started with your predecessor, Mr. Kumar, and now you've just taken it forward. Yeah, at that point in time, there was a deep introspection which was done and we actually learned our lessons in terms of what went wrong. This is before banks were recapitalized by the government, 2017-18, yeah, I would it. imagine. That was actually soon after the AQR happened. So during the AQR when it happened, and actually around the same time we had merged all our associate banks also. The four banks got merged? The four banks. Market. No, actually uh, five plus one Bharatiya Mahila Bank okay. that got merged. So that is something, that's a point of time when we had, we actually went through, introspected what went wrong, what needs to be corrected. Because when it comes to the credit assessment, we could figure out that there are, sub, there are certain gaps which we need to bridge. We created a department which we call it a credit review department. So we were having the risk department always. We were having risk department from the year 2008-9 onwards, so about 14-15 years, years, we have created the risk department within the bank. So we could figure out that apart from the macro, there is a need for reviewing the micro risk also. So that is something this department is now interested with this task they do the micro risk assessment and then based on that they give their own independent inputs to the credit committees. So credit committees when they evaluate the risk, they have an independent view also apart from the limited time in which they have to take a call. So I think that is something which has helped quite a lot. And so you've learned the art of saying no. Oh, yeah. You don't give yes, yes. to every loan yes. that comes to you. Yes. That's the change can I That's say. the change and apart from that we also ensure that we need to strengthen the balance sheet and we have to insulate it from all kind of potential credit risk and we did that and that is the reason why now we have adopted the practice that even if the account is not an NPA but we get a feedback from our relationship manager that there is a stress in the account and it might turn NPA, we rather start providing even before RBA expect us to provide and that is the reason that today at times we provide upfront and accountants and P in the later uh, yes, yes. You've already provided later cycles. Your, your, your provisioning is very aggressive now. We have made aggressive provisioning and that's why today we are at 90% plus of the, the PCR. And when it comes to our corporate credit, our, our PCR is as high as 93%. Yes. I was looking at the numbers. Now my question is that there was a time when you started repairing your balance sheet. NPS came under control, high provisioning. PCR issues have come under control. But are you at the beginning of a fresh multi-year credit cycle now? Uh, see, when it comes to multi-year credit cycle, it will be a function of the economy too. Okay. So if at all economy offers us the opportunity, I think uh, we will not be behind and we will rather add in terms of supporting the credit requirements of this economy. So broadly, the growth of State Bank of India is a multiplier to the economy plus two or three percent. Will this time, because you have capital, you have CASA, you have market share, and smaller banks are getting squeezed out. Will you be growing higher than the historical growth rate? I'm hoping that we will be in a position to grow at least at about 14% plus. 
this year, which is much higher than what you've done in the past. Yes. What is fueling this optimism? I hope you will not take risk. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we will not take risk, and because what has happened is that earlier, our retail engine was doing very well. Yes. This year, we have started seeing that the corporate also there is a decent traction. We already have got unavailed working capital limits and unutilized term loans, which are as high as about five trillion Indian rupees. Apart from that, we have got a decent pipeline for our uh, corporate also, uh, which is as high as about one trillion plus. So that is something which is almost in the visibility. And so term loan and working capital requirement, they both are coming. Yeah, both are coming, and also uh, the retail will continue to fuel the way it has done in the past. And I think SME also we have seen about 10% growth this year. So we are hopeful that we should be in a position to have. My friends tell me that the best coffee in the town is an SBI canteen. Please, so I guess that is where we should be going. Please, for. please, please. <laughs> Let's do. So, Mr. Kara, that brings me to my next question, which is that how will this credit cycle be different from the last credit cycle? This credit cycle will be different because one, we have understood the risk which are inherent in the economy, and. We have also learned uh, the lessons in terms of what were the sharper practices followed by some of the corporates. And the third, which is equally important, earlier uh, losing a control of an enterprise was more of a fiction in the Indian setup. Post IBBI, now it has become a reality. Yes. Promoters are scared. So promoters are scared and that is also one of the reasons that they will not, they don't come for the leverage unless and until they feel that they can repay that. So I think these are some of the major changes which have happened in the ecosystem. And if at all I may draw some more parallel, see there was a point of time when commercial bankers were not at all willing to lend to individuals also. You, even for that matter mortgage loan also which started, it started somewhere in 2004-05 only in a very big way. Yes, Earlier yes, HDFC used yes, to be the only, only, one, only one. Only one. Commercial banks were not there. So that has happened because the bureaus came into existence. That has happened because there was a clear visibility of the credit history. Mm -hmm. And now with the currency coming into existence, sharing of information among the banks, there is ample information which is available with the lender to know about the corporate. The success of Sibyl. Success of Sibyl. So these are the kind of things, these are, these are the kind of ecosystem enablers which have actually bolstered the confidence of the lenders too. So I think, uh, I feel that uh, because of this very reason, this credit cycle is going to be very different than what we have seen in the past. So if interest rates, they, they've already moved higher. They may move higher, they may not move higher, that's debatable. But at what point in time it will start impacting affordability and start feeling in place? See, there is a general believe that every interest rate hike will have an impact. But the fact of the matter is we have done some analysis for the corporates and if we look at it, depending on their leverage, the interest cost is not more than 10 to 12 percent, depending upon how much leverage they have taken. So as a cost, it is not a, as significant a component, but much of it is the function of the demand. If at all there is a demand, they can actually pass on this cost as well. So that's how it is, uh, it is impacting overall. And when it comes to retail, when in, in the retail, you know, we have invariably seen that during inflationary conditions, the salary is also increased. Yes. And actually, it, uh, if at all, one has acquired an asset in, uh, during inflationary condition through a leverage, it rather goes to the advantage of the individual. The value of the asset will keep on growing, whereas the EMI will remain static as it is. Well, maybe minor changes would be there. So to that extent, I think it should not have any significant impact on the individual's borrowings as well. My mortgage loan, I'm actually seeing a very good traction and uh, I don't see demand tapering off at all. So all the subsidies which you have, whether it's insurance, uh, both general and life, your mortgage business or even for that matter credit card business, is there slowdown at all in any of the businesses? Not at all. First time State Bank of India is saying that officially we don't have slowdown in our dispute. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all slowdown. We, we are seeing decent growth in all these subsidies also. And uh, happy to see that uh, it's, it's, uh, it appears to be a sustainable growth too. There is a big merger in the sector. HDFC Limited and HDFC Bank, they come together. Could there be a fight of two behemoths now? Because 
one of the products for example is the mortgage product where hdfc bank will not be able to compete you mastered the art of gaining market share in that product could this merger just lead to some more good news for consumer and bad news for shareholder kind of in scenario no i think uh, the way i look at it is is ample scope for the market to grow so it it will be having sufficient scope for these two big players to have their own niche uh, and as far as the competition is concerned i was a few days back i was just looking into some of the old articles the chairman of, of state bank of india in 1956 soon after it came into its current avatar has thank you has talked about competition in the year 1956 also and uh, uh, i was speaking to some of the historians who are writing our history they said that when many joint stock companies came into existence uh, joint stock banks came into existence state bank of india in order to really compete with them the, the in the earlier of the like imperial bank of india they introduced a teller facility during those days sort of a teller it was not known as teller but they said okay for the for your uh, well known customers the the cashier is authorized to make the payment okay so that was the kind of a you know that's how we have seen that how can uh, i mean we keep the customer at the center and then take all the decisions the customer centricity is always the guiding principle so that's why if at all competition is coming you are prepared we are prepared we are will certainly respond to that with the I always tell with you, all our might you know, always say that who says elephants cannot dance if i look at your stock price your performance i mean it's so heartening to see what how state bank of india which in a sense everybody had raised question marks about their commitment towards shareholders has made a comeback i mean it's absolutely incredible my next question is about please yes thank you So I was not wrong when I said that this indeed is the best coffee in the town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> How does your day start? How does the day of India's biggest banker start? How does it end? Do you take phone to home? Do you answer business calls at home? Saturday, Sunday is also you work. <laughs> I think it's uh, it's more like a life. <laughs> you know, for us in the bank, we put in so many years, and we dream of SBI. We 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 live only sbi <laughs> that's what our reality is and it is it is very much in our dna it is very much in our blood every state bank of india chairman has left a unique mark whether it was ms bhattacharya your predecessor mr kumar what is that legacy you want to leave i'm not saying so you're retiring but i'm sure you must be thinking that what is that big change you want to do which could be transformational and instrumental for a delta move in a big bank like sbi I would like to make the bank more customer centric by ensuring that the way in case of McDonald there is a McDonald center of service even in banking we should have a state bank of india center of service wow. that's that's a great thought and how will you achieve that uh we are doing lot many things we are we, are, we have introduced net promoter score we are uh, ensuring that uh, uh, all our ground forces are are appraised of where do they stand in this net promoter score <coughs> and how they can improve we are also providing them enablers how can how can they improve so these are some it's a it's a, it's a very very comprehensive so is the bank now at the verge of a transformational change because incremental changes are always happening that's always work in progress but are there transformational changes i mean my definition of transformational change i'm breaking it for viewers is how you changed your risk management policy how you made your subsidiaries large and independent what are the transformational changes i think adoption of uh, technology in a much bigger way and also we are now trying to embark upon the customization hyper personalization is something which is all use of technology aiming, with the use of technology so that is something which we are working on we are already working on our project juno 2.0 which is essentially focusing on these few aspects the legacy problem for state bank of india and this pure legacy the size and uh, how things are for state bank of india is the cost to income ratio how are you planning to reduce that actually when it comes to cost to income ratio we have got about 17% cost which is coming on account of the retirement benefits yes. that kind of a cost is not there with any other institution so i have that's the kind of a rigidity which i experience so in that kind of a scenario what should we do 
so that's the reason why we have got a sharper focus on increasing the income and with that in mind we are now uh, recently we have come out with a operational support subsidiary also it has just been launched so in that operational support subsidiary our effort would be that our rural and semi urban space we have got lot many branches but there we have got a, a, some kind of a limitation in terms of manpower which is available because their ability to move out their ability to uh, to engage with the customer is very limited so just to support them this is the operational support subsidiary that will help us ensuring the income of these of almost what 60% of our 22000 branches there in the rural and up country areas rural semi urban spaces where there could be some challenge in terms of uh, you know uh, reaching out to the customer so we are trying to offer the door step service and by which of that will be efficient to attract more and more business from this space which will actually improve our income and with the improved income our cost to income ratio will look like so will come increase down. the base rather than focusing absolutely. on uh, yeah, you know the legacy challenges because cost wise i think we cannot do much exactly. so i have uh, 17% you have to pay out i have understood my limitation and that's why now my focus is only to show up the income so that the cost to income ratio should be within the within the norms which are expected but the roi still needs to move above 1% that's the because state bank of india now if i look at all the subsidiaries pretty much global comparison is there even if you have insurance subsidiary or if you have credit card subsidiary the spreads and the benchmarks are at best in the industry roi is where again the needle gets stuck well uh, of course this quarter was bit of an aberration in the last quarter we had achieved the roi of about 0.62 Uh, this quarter also if we if we ignore the mtm loss which is essentially a loss on account of the of Bond the yields. market movement of gsec and the revaluation of the our afs stock uh, actually our roi stands at about 0.89 and uh, roe is at 18% plus so hopefully if as on september we don't have the burden of uh, this mtm hopefully we should be somewhere there and uh, that's a big delta which automatically comes yes. at the profitability level absolutely which means if your roi goes higher yes and if casa is looking decent you may actually grow fy23 and you may not need capital till fy24 broadly see even now also with the current capital i can easily grow almost about 3.6 trillion and as far as the loan goes next 2 3 years you technically don't need capital so ideally speaking i don't think so i need it but nevertheless uh, we have already raised, uh, got the approval for raising uh, 11000 crore through 81 and 82 and we'll be going ahead with that uh, issuance and uh, hopefully that will take care of our capital requirements too we'll you know, well capitalize as well yes that's wonderful news so what's your uh, commitment towards shareholders we've always spoken about state bank of india the banker of india it is keeping our money safe it is helping us grow it is giving us money when we need to grow it is always enjoyed this importance of social relevance now it's the shareholder which is a government of india 56% institutional investors and retail investors like me what would be your, your commitment see uh, i always say that we have to create value for all of our stakeholders and when i'm talking of roi of almost around 1 and roi of plus 15 it is a significant value creation for our existing shareholders too and i'm um, We're quite confident that it will be well rewarded by the. Do you look at the stock price of State Bank on a daily basis? I do get it at the end of the day. Well, How was the movement? I'll request you to watch it on ETN on a daily basis. <laughs> then. <laughs> thank you, thank really, you, certainly. Really appreciate your time and thank you for joining us and thank you for having us uh, in State Bank of India headquarters. A feeling of nostalgia, a feeling of uh, of always. Uh, you know history comes in when we talk about the branch state bank of india we are celebrating 75 years of independence but one institution which has played a very large role in building india is state bank of india the banker of every indian the bank which has kept our money safe the bank which gives us money when we need it and a bank which has made our dreams come true